Welcome to the Spirit Centered Business Podcast, where we blend the spiritual with the practical for supernatural results. Now, here is your host, Berlin Newby. Welcome to Spirit Centered Business. I am so blessed to have Mark and Katie Wilburn here today, and I'm going to introduce them more in a minute. But first, let me tell you that the Academy is now open. This is a place where you can not only get training from the experts that are on the show, and I'm excited for what Katie's going to be teaching today, but we also have twice a month live coaching, and I will help you implement what you learn because transformation comes from implementation. You can't just continue to intake information without putting it to work in your business if you want to move that needle forward in your business. So that's what the Academy is all about. You can go to spiritcenteredbusiness.com and click on the Academy button there. And my other big announcement is the cruise is open for business. We are launching out of Miami on September 12th through the 20th and we're going to the Caribbean and I'm so excited to have Lindy Strong with me and the cruise is called SCB, Spirit Center Business, SCB at Sea Inside Out because we have to work on our inside game so that it comes out well in our business and we can serve more people when we get rid of our stuff, especially money conversations, which is what Mark and Katie are awesome at. <laughs> so when we can learn to get over our own money issues and understand that it's just energy, we will be able to serve more people and make more money so that we can really walk out our destiny through our business. So that's what the cruise is all about. You can go to spiritcenteredbusiness.com and click on the cruise button over there. And I think that's enough for announcements. Let's get to our guests. Mark and Katie Wilburn, you are amazing. I got to meet you in person in Moravian Falls. That was so cool. We've had you on Kingdom Talks, and I love your story. I love what you're doing in the marketplace. You have a unique niche where you're teaching people how to trade, and we'll get into that. But right now, I'd like to hear your story. How did you get started? How are you blending your spirituality with your business stuff? So take it away. Oh, Braylon, thank you so much for having us. It is the greatest honor. It is, we're so humbled and we're so honored to get to be on your show, um, to get to address all of your viewers in the Academy. Uh, we just bless you guys. Uh, it, we're just so humbled. So thank you for this opportunity. Absolutely. Um, I'm thank Kate you know Goldburn. I'm Mark. It's awesome to be here with you. And I love your hair. You changed it just a little bit since I saw it last in Moravian Falls. It looks great with the streaks. And totally I, digging the blue. I didn't even, I didn't see it because your coat was there. And I was oh, like, it's yeah. blended in. It blended in at first. This, this is my breath of heaven just to prove I've been there. There you go. There you go. I like that. I like that. I would do the same, but I don't know where I would put it. <laughs> So I'll let, uh, I'll let Kate share a little bit of our journey and where we kind of come from on her end. I'll share a little bit about how I got in, involved uh, really in this mystic move, the sonship move. Um, you know, I hate to label something because I think when we start labeling things, we limit what the father can really do with it. Um, right. But, we don't want to set boundaries. Yeah. You know, well, we're, we're trying to break out of a theological paradigm and labeling things tends to put us right back into theology. So exactly. <laughs> we're trying to be cautious. Yeah. And not that theology is bad. It's just, you know, we don't want to box ourselves in and limit ourselves to what the father can show us. And so, especially um, when we don't know what it's going to look like. <laughs> I have no idea. Exactly. I have no idea. <laughs> the more revelation opens up more questions. So the more we learn, yeah. the less we know. <laughs> right. <laughs> and I've, you know, I've, even in business, I've heard so many people say, this is what I thought it was going to look like. And it's the straight line of like hard work, success. And then it's like, but what really happens is you run through an obstacle course and you get tripped up and then you fall and then you find success eventually. So, you know, something that we've learned is if you, if you put a, a box on it, it typically doesn't happen. But if you still have that passion, that drive, that ambition, then God makes that way. Right. So right. let Kate take it away. Well, um, I don't want to spend... I don't want to spend too much time on um, how we got into this stream, but Mark and Mark used to work or um, was working for a company uh, that also taught uh, stock trading education. 
And they were a wonderful company and we are so thankful for them, um, for what they have instilled in, in Mark. They Absolutely. laid the foundation for us to be able to launch out and we're so, so thankful for them. Um, but while he was working for them, we were both kind of feeling drawn um, out into some more mystical stuff, but it felt very heretical. <laughs> you yes. know, you're in the church and you're like, God, ah, there's more to this. I just don't know what it is. So you go diving off the diving board into some stuff. You're like, I feel like I am on my way to hell, but something about it feels right. <laughs> and so um, we asked, that sounded that bad. Sounds that sounded real bad. So <laughs> we know what you meant, though. It's but okay. you, you do. You feel like, oh, this is so wrong, but it's so right. Um, yeah. <laughs> How about this goes against what I've been taught, and that's what creates that feeling for us. You know, you you start having encounters. You start, and this is kind of what Katie did. Is she started having these crazy encounters and experiences, and she would talk to me about it, and I was actually the one who's like, Kate, I don't know about that. I mean, it wasn't that. It wasn't that she necessarily felt this was wrong and she was telling me these encounters and I'm like, this doesn't match what we grew up believing. Right. But I trust and my so wife. Much, yes, I, I agree. I and agree. so we have this paradigm of like, I trust my wife. I trust, I trust more than I trust her. I tr trust the Holy spirit in her. And mm -hmm. so we have to say, okay, show us this in scripture. Where is a plumb line of what we're experiencing that you've already established, right? Where is this law of first mention? And I think oftentimes we actually are blinded to it, you know, because when people start saying, well, you know, out of body experiences, that's not biblical. Read Ezekiel, read Daniel, read all these, Abraham had these radical encounters. And so she's having these encounters and I'm like, oh, God, where is this in the Bible? Now I read Ezekiel and I'm like, oh, God pulled Ezekiel through his head via his hair and put him in another city. Yeah. Maybe this is in there, but I didn't have the paradigm to understand it. And I think that's what you're talking about more than, oh, it's terrible. And I think I'm going to hell, but it's not. Well, right? when you're starting to pursue something in a new age, but you're still seated in the old age, it feels wrong. Yeah. That's a great way to say it. Absolutely. Um, Good way to put it. So, Long story short, we just, uh, we found out about uh, Company of Burning Hearts was our gateway drug. And they were just so fabulous. And Justin Abraham just introduced us to some wonderful things with Ian Clayton. And once we, once we found those guys, we were home. And we ate and ate and ate and ate those scrolls over and over to the point, um, I, share, I actually share this quite often because this was a turning point for us. Um, for about two years, all we did was we we ate the scroll. We ate the teachings. We just couldn't get enough. Okay, hold on. Some of my audience doesn't understand that language. So could you explain that a little bit? <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, That's okay. <laughs> scrolls being what is written in the heavenly realms, what the Lord has, has written out for us to to insert into our lives and to digest as teaching, we, we listen to teachings over and over yes. and over. Sorry. <laughs> no, that's absolutely fine. You know, taste and see that the Lord is good. It's about getting it in you, right? Okay. Well, I think there's actually a place in Revelations where John ate does say he, he eats the scroll. Yes, exactly. John, Jeremiah, Ezekiel. That's, that's what I was people. referencing. So. Okay. Perfect. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, so we just, we got so full and fat on all of this amazing teaching. And we learned how to come out of an old age and into what Yahweh was wanting to release. And one day I was uh, driving down the road and I heard a conversation in the spirit realm between um, Yahweh and some of the angelic that communes with us. And they said, Lord, they are growing at a faster rate than was expected. Do we impart to them the authority they're supposed to have at this point in their education, or do we wait for the appointed time? And as I overheard that, I interjected. I didn't, I didn't even give God time to answer. I said, wait, do not give us something we're not mature enough to handle. 
if we're eating something too quickly, let us stop and allow our maturity and our character and our integrity catch up to all of what we are digesting. And so I shared this with Mark and I said, let's calm down a little bit. Clearly we're getting ahead of the game because we're so zealous for it. And we, we, it's not that we stopped listening, but we just kind of marinated in all that we had digested and we allowed it to seep into the very DNA of who we are and how we conducted our lives. And yes, it's ethereal, but we had to choose how are we going to play this out day to day? What is this going to look like in real life, real life application? What is the fruit we're going to bear? That is so incredibly important. And it's one of my top, top hot buttons. It's like, it's, you can't just sit around hanging out in the heavenlies if it's not going to, you're not going to pull it down to earth. We pray right. for 2000 years, thy kingdom come. That's right. You know, right. not, I want to go to the kingdom. That's right. right. <laughs> well, it's on earth as yeah, it is in heaven. Yeah. And right. if you're going into heaven and not administrating into the earth. You're missing the whole boat. Yeah. Um, yeah, exactly. Beautiful. Okay. You actually said something about your cruise that I loved. Um, essentially, you have to work out what's been put in you. Right. Yeah. Um, but you had a really nice rhymey phrase. I like rhymey phrases um, for it. So anyway, you said something really clever. And um, I think at that point, we really started saying, okay, let's, let's not just listen to this. Let's practice this. Let's, let's practice stepping in. Let's practice uh, going through the course. Let's deal with our junk, right? We've heard tons yeah. of teachings on dealing with our character issues, dealing with our bloodline issues, um, working out fear, working out greed, working out jealousies, working out insecurities. I think it's a huge one. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, going into the courts, repenting for that stuff, actually taking the teachings that we've heard and rather than it being something that we heard, we're like, oh, that's good. That's life changing. Actually use it to change your life. Right. And I think the one you're referring to, I've been saying since I think 2012, I coined it implementation. Oh, wait, transformation comes from implementation. That's it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that, was that was it. And you have, to, you have to implement it. You know, it can't yeah. just, it cannot remain a good teaching. Yeah but you have to implement it and grow in a maturity, maturity process and trust that the Lord is such a good father that he will give you what you need to grow and the responsibility with it. And so we've got three little boys at home and our oldest is he's four and a half years old and he's just now learning how to, you know, help me make eggs in the morning. Right. And so I'm trusting him with these little bitty tasks So that he can grow in his maturity to it. Mm -hmm. And I'm doing that because I feel the same way with our father. Like he, he, I want to do these things. You know, I want to go and engage in these bigger realms. And sometimes the Lord lets me do it watching him or holding his hand. But to do it by myself, number one is foolish. Because what are the ramifications of me doing this? With great power comes great responsibility. And so for her to make the statement, we don't want this authority until we have the integrity to support it. And I think a lot of times people put that cart before the horse. And they say, you know, I want to operate in the celestial. I want to operate in these kingdom realms. I want to do these things, but you lie and cheat people in your business. Even to have the discernment to say that shows maturity. So that is, you're, you're absolutely right. And I don't even know that a lot of people have enough discernment to say, no, wait, I'm not mature enough yet. You know what I mean? They don't even have that much maturity. They're just like, gimme, gimme, gimme. Right. And some of that is an entitlement you know, mindset. So love that. Brilliant. Well, we're at, when you're in the state of growth, you have to remember y'all, and this is all over scripture. Y'all put cycles into the earth, growth and rest, Mm -hmm. seed time and harvest growth and rest. And if you're in a season where you are growing into new authority and new levels, you're growing out of that old age We're, we're we've all been in that transition. I think for some years now, some of us are a little older, some of us are newer, but we're all kind of there. 
we have to understand that yes, there is that period where we're growing, but then we need to have a period where we're resting and you're digesting everything that you have grown into, letting it mm-hmm. marinate and you enter into a time of self-examination and say, okay, if a man is known by his fruit and I have done all of this growth, what fruit am I displaying? Mm-hmm. What, root, what fruit needs to be pruned off and cut off and to give room for new fruit to flourish? What fruit needs to be harvested and kept? What, you know, it's just a process of self-examination. And that's what we did. That's what we did for a couple of years. And in, during that time, Yahweh kind of exploded a vision within Mark's heart and spirit or Nia's for our company mm-hmm. that we have. And do you want to kind of tell about that? Yeah. And so uh, Neos was a, a vision I've had for actually even before we got into this mystical realm um, and this journey. And, but it wasn't until we were in this that it really birthed. And, you know, I think one part of have you said, you know, having the discernment to say these things, I think we took some of our teachers advice and counsel. Um, you know, we were part of the nest for three years and we constantly heard Ian Clayton and Grant and Sam Mahoney say, um, stay within your pay grade, enjoy your pay grade, operate in your pay grade. Don't go too high. Enjoy where you're at. You will be promoted. Um, and we, we really took that to heart, you know, yeah. we really took that to heart. Um, and so what we did is sitting on Neos, we were like, you know what, Lord, we could do this, but we actually want to wait for your time. We want to wait till we have the maturity, the honor, the integrity, um, the discipline, the, you know, the spiritual underworkings and almost yeah. pillars to support everything that we're doing. We want to wait until we launch it and then not just wait until we launch it, but we want to integrate that into the company because that's part of who we are. And so, you know, it's amazing that you have this platform spirit centered business because how do you integrate that, right? Mm-hmm. And I give mad accolades and props to Marios Ellenus because he's been a huge factor in that for us. And so for, for guests who aren't familiar with Marios, he's a best-selling author, um, focuses a lot on honor and integrity and, and literally walking that out. Um, not just the concept of honor, but understanding and having relationships with who honor truly is. And, and implementing that in your life, because again, a man's known by their fruits and more than anything. Yes. We want to be great stock traders. Yes. We want our, our students to flourish. But to me, the best testimony is we act with integrity and honor in all dealings, whether business, financial, relational, personal, that, you know, one of the characteristics in our life is that we are men and women of honor. And so how, how do we mold that into everything that we do? Mm, that's really good. And Mario's wow. has some amazing teachings on that. And it's, he's really helped show us how to do that mm-hmm. as well. Great. That so. is perfect. So we launched Neo's a year and a half ago. Mm-hmm. Um, and tell us about the name Neos. So Neos is a Greek name. It means new in time, fresh start, okay. new beginning. Um, and I actually did. A, I dug a little deeper because um, Mark chose the name. Neos is Mark's baby. He had he had her the vision. He birthed. Her, we birthed her together. Together, yeah. But it was he carried her for years uh. and years. And so when um when he first chose that name, that was those were the meanings that he found. And I dug a little deeper. And I love what I found. Um, you have two terms in the Greek for life, chronos and neos. And oh, if you've heard other teaching, uh, Justin Abraham has actually taught on chronos beings. And I think Ian has touched on chronos beings. And they, a chronos being is a completely new creation. And that is what mankind is. That is what humans are. That is, that is what the Father it created in us was a chronos being. Neos is something that has been renovated or made like new. Mm. So taking something that has already been in existence 
and refurbishing it and, and, and making it new in its time. And so that is exactly what NEOS does. We take age old concepts, economic financial concepts using the stock market and we insert new spiritual principles. They're not new, but it's new to the ec economic system and the economic structure. Uh -huh. we, have ins we insert that in, into um, trading and financial, I'm tripping over my words actually, because I'm getting a <laughs> wrecked on what I'm seeing. But um, it's, all good. Not, it's all good, I'm sorry. Yeah, that's okay. Um, yeah, I love the idea that you that you are blending two things that we used to always keep separate and now you're putting them together. So that's brilliant. And then the fact that Neos actually means that, oh, you can't make this stuff up, right? You can't make this stuff up. No. <laughs> and so what's you know what's funny is I actually had this thing created years ago um, in preparation because you know you, you do need to prepare to launch a business or organization or service or anything that we're doing. Um, mm -hmm. And one of the things on my heart was not just the name Neos, but the, our, our full title is Neos Capital Development Group. And we mm -hmm. wanted it to be an, a group of people who were creating capital. And, you know, whether that's in the financial markets and the stock markets, which is really what we're focusing on right now, we want a group of people a group of sons, if you would, who are creating financial structures who are, yes, we're making a lot of money for ourselves, but we're also able to use that money and put it out into the economics that we care about, you know, ministries that we we're really want to support to do the things that we feel God has put on our hearts to go do. Mm -hmm. um, because so many times people are just, you know, they're working their normal job or they're, yep. they're living their normal life. And it, it almost, I mean, it's a bad word here, but it almost castrates their vision. Yeah. It cuts that vision off. And so what, yeah. is, what, what starts being birthed when you realize, wow, I can have streams of income coming and I don't have to trade my time for my money anymore. My money can actually work for me. My money can help create this so that I can go and pursue what God's really put in my heart, what's really on my scroll, what's really in my spirit to go and do. Um, and as such, it's an avenue by which the wealth of the wicked can be released to the righteous. Yeah. And, and there's another thing too. You, everyone kind of knows that time is kind of wrapping up and it feels like, you know, things are getting pushed and the whole um, censorship and saying all that it's going to take a lot of money for us to stay connected if we need to create our own structures because we can no longer operate on the enemy's structures. Do you, do you see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. You know, I don't, I'm not going to spill too many beans, but it, it's going to take a lot of money yeah. to do okay. what we need to be doing. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. And so, you know, you talking about the crews, even the belief systems that we have around money. Right. Yeah. And so if you're going to be working on that, we have such poor belief systems where it comes to finances, where it comes to wealth. What is, you know, most people when they think of wealthy individuals think of, Oh, they're evil. They're, they hoard their money. They don't give And Most, most wealthy individuals actually are extreme extravagant givers, which is why they get more money. Um, right. And so when people think, wow, the rich are, uh, it's, you know, the dirty money, the you know, dirty, rotten scoundrel. Kind. If you think that you're not going to be that. That's right. You'll right? never become that. Right. Exactly. Wow. We all, we all have junk surrounding yeah. money. We all do. I mean, and that, that's just part of life, but we, we get to choose what we do with that junk. Are you going to become a victim to it or are you going to overcome it? Are you going to deal with it and recognize it? And what do I mean by junk? Um, issues of greed, issues of poverty, Fear of being rich, fear of being poor, fear of not having enough money tomorrow, fear of, oh my gosh, what do I do if I get a bunch of money? Fear yeah. of what if somebody's going to steal my money? I mean, the list goes on and on and on. And one thing that Mark and I have recognized um, 
any people, any, anyone who has any measure of junk, it's usually surrounded by two topics, sex or money. Yep. Those are the main two hot topics. Yep. Exactly. And that's the enemy's territory. Totally his playground. Yep. Well, but it's because there's so much to be governed in those two areas. Those two yep. areas are all about government and covenant and administration into the earth. That's why the enemy has tried to make it his playground so that he could thwart the sons and trick them into not understanding who they are, where these two topics are concerned. Mm. So once we have recognized this thing and the scales are taken off of our eyes and we see, wait a second, I may not fully understand who I am, but I know that what I have believed in the past is not true. Then it's now our responsibility to dig into the father and say, who am I? Who am I concerning finances? Who yeah. am I concerning covenant in my relationship with my spouse? Who am yeah. I supposed to be? Where am I supposed to be seated? That is where we enter into our responsibility as a son of God, where yes, the Lord will give you grace to walk it, but you have to take the responsibility and the initiative to pursue it as well. Nice. I heard, you know, I heard a guy Preaching, say, it's, uh, <laughs> she's good at doing that. I heard a guy say, it's a disservice to think poverty is holy when the holiest one of all is an abundant king. Exactly. It, that makes me so mad when people have that mindset. This is such a lie. It is. It is, absolutely. And so, um, you know, after, after some years of pondering our company, um, the time was right for us to launch what we're doing. And so we did. And the Lord has really blessed it. And it looks nothing like it we thought looks it nothing would. Like thought it would. <laughs> I mean, you know, we thought we would be teaching around live events or, you know, just doing different things. Um, we actually have clients in 15 countries around the world. We thought we would be domestic. I thought we'd be totally in the USA at first and God, right. Yahweh just starts opening up doors for us. And we yeah. you know, you step through the doors when it's him that's opening. And, um, you know, we've, we've been able to connect with some amazing people. We've got amazing students and, um, we continue to grow. And so it's, I think a lot of that though is founded because we were trusting Holy Spirit's leading. We're trusting his guidance. Um, and the way that we operate our business is first and foremost with honor and integrity. And so mm -hmm. I think those, those pillars speak for themselves. Yep. One thing that Kate says that I love is that honor has a voice and it's always recognized. Mm. And so that dishonor, you know, when someone is saying that they honor you, but it's really dishonor, you can tell the difference. You know, you can tell the difference between true honor and flattery. Right. Right. And so honor speaks with his own voice and it's easily recognized. And that's, that's one thing that we've really tried to integrate into NEOS is that platform of honor. Mm -hmm. Yeah, in uh, fact, we give away, we give away more than we really need to. <laughs> being, you know, being business owners, you, even though you have kingdom principles, you're like, well, we do need to make money. We've got to, we've got to pay the expenses. We've got bills to pay. You know, we have- and you have like 17 kids, right? <laughs> yeah, we got kids to feed. And <laughs> You know, so there is, you know, there is the real life application of it, but yeah. because we love our students and honor them so, so much, Mark, he makes fun of me. He's like, Kate, you keep giving away our stuff. I just give away coupons and services because I want to make sure that people feel safe and welcome and supported and loved and honored as being part of our business. Right. But that even that has... That has a lot of, um, there's a lot of poverty mindset juice on that where that I run into with my clients wanting to give everything away yes. because there's a fear of charging for their value. Right. Yes. Now, what you're saying is different. I just want to be clear for those of you who want to keep giving all of your stuff away, stop it. <laughs> charge for your value <laughs> she's talking about something different here <laughs> that's right no i am no we have we we have set our prices and we're very proud of our prices and mm -hmm. we don't 
We don't shake down on our prices. Now we will offer okay. discounts and promotions. Um, just like any business should and would, but if you right. don't value your product and your services, no one else will. Exact. Oh, brilliant. Okay. That's your quotable. That's good. That's <laughs> you know, really, Love it. Absolutely. We were setting prices. Um, yeah, I've been in this industry for a long time. I mean, over, probably over 11 years now and I, I've got a really good pulse on what, good value is and not value is. And so when we were actually looking at creating our curriculum and created it, um, I looked at multiple different ways of pricing. And finally the Lord just kind of whispered to me and, you know, getting back to this being spirit centered, Holy Spirit just yeah. whispered to me and said, do you want my input? Right. And so, yeah. and, and Kate can attest to this. I actually argued with the Lord when we set our prices, cause I wanted to set them higher because I knew the value of it. I've seen the value of it. I've lived the value of it. Um, and the Holy Spirit specifically said to set our prices at something. And so, you know, again, a lot of this has to do to me with a concept of doing business with who God is, mm -hmm. not just saying, Hey, magic man in the sky, bless this. Cause I'm doing it in your name. And if you bless me, then I'll give to the poor. Or if you mm -hmm. bless me, then I'll do this. Right. What it's saying is, Hey, what do you think? How should I set this Absolutely. price? Absolutely. What do you? Absolutely. What is your input on this? Proverbs four says, "Wisdom cries loud in the where, the market marketplace." Yeah. She's not crying aloud in the church. She's not right. crying aloud in the streets. She's crying aloud in the marketplace, meaning she is screaming at us business owners at those who are functioning in the marketplace and in business and professional worlds. Yes. She's crying out to us. And if she's crying out and screaming, she's not going to be that hard to hear. It's not right. going to be that difficult to pick up on her. The father, he does have a still small voice. And so sometimes we do question if we hear him, but wisdom, she's screaming. And so all you have to do is attune your ear to listen and she will give you wisdom on how to run your company, on how to run your business dealings, how to create your infrastructure and your pricing structure. And right. right. And and he, he knows that, you know, if your business model is to sell X number at, at Y dollars, he might be t switching it around right. because he wants to serve more people. And at the end of the day, it will equal out the same. Yep. You know, but his plan is better than our plan. Or maybe he'll be giving you a plethora of products to sell. And so that's how you're going to get, you know, it, you yeah, never yeah. know. And you have to pay attention and you have to listen because I have done it my way long enough. I'm done. Right. I only want to do it his way. Yes. <laughs> well, you know, and scripture says, unless the Lord builds the house, the one who labors, labors in vain. Yes. And yeah. I would rather... If he births it, and I think this is a problem that a lot of folks run into is we don't understand where the inception of this thing comes in. If it's from him, it's his responsibility to take care of it. Mm -hmm. If it's from us, it's our responsibility to take care of it. And so I believe there's this co-laboring where you do it together and still he, he shoulders the burden, right? Because his yoke is easy, his burden is light. He mm -hmm. shoulders that for you. And so there's been moments where I'm like, hey, what do I do next? And he's like, rest. I've got this. I'm going to open a door. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this. And every single time he comes through because we know this is birthed from him. Now, I have the opportunity to invite him in, not just to say, hey, I'm doing this promotion or I'm going to create this thing. I want you to bless it. But say, hey, what should we do? And then listen to, listen to that counsel. Yes. Be led, right? Those who are the sons of God are led by the Spirit of God. And right. so to be led in that, in those dealings, in those environments, um, I don't think this is going to work, Lord. Well, this is what I'm telling you to do, so do it. Right. All right. You wanted my input. Here it is. Yeah. Okay, I really think we should do this. I do too. Three months from now. Got it. Yeah, you know exactly. What I'm saying? And, and so yes, there's and that working together. Mm hmm. And, you know, I don't think I've shared this with you guys. Well, maybe I did in Moravian Falls, but 
Um, we also have in Spirit Center Business, we have an activation group where we meet twice a month and we literally go into the heavens to see what Father has. And doing it as a group kind of helps those who are a little bit maybe less experienced in seeing and reading scrolls or understanding what's going on or um, meeting the different help that is available for us. So it's really cool to do it all together because I guarantee you every single time, you know, he knocks our socks off with something we didn't expect. Right. You know, we've, we've, we've taken journeys that you could not make this stuff up. And then how it translates to the 3D world when we come back down is just been phenomenal. Yeah. So, it, yeah. Anyway. And I, I know um, Chris Valentin is the one who really changed my paradigm on this. I heard him tell a story about he, was a, he owned an auto mechanic shop. There was a car they couldn't figure out the issue with. Yeah. He literally put his hand on it and prayed and Holy Spirit gave him the answer. And lo and behold, it worked. And he's like, wow, who knew Holy Spirit was a mechanic? Yep. And so I, I heard that and I was like, man, if he can do that for this business, why can't he do it in every business? And the truth is he can and he wants to. Yes. It's our humbling of ourselves because how many times do we think we have the right answer? Right. <laughs> it's our humbling of ourselves to listen and then walk it out. Um, I think Bill Gates has a really good quote. He says, the problem with success is it makes you think you're right. <laughs> yeah, that's a good one. And so, you know, when we're, when we're in these places, yeah, we've got success here, but does that mean we're going to have success the next time we do the exact same thing? A plus B in business doesn't always equal C. Yes. And, you know, King David, okay. when he was fighting the Philistines, same people fighting the same people, actually in the same valley, he went and beat them one way. The next time it says he inquired of the Lord and the Lord gave him a completely different strategy. It was the same yeah. army, same valley, different strategy. And that's, to me, that's a great business lesson. That is, that's brilliant. Yep. Perfect. So. I'm on that, but you know. <laughs> <laughs> so what would you like to share um, about what you teach in Neo? It's just kind of like, overview of what it is so if people want to get more involved and you know take a look at what you're teaching over there as far as the stock market and training and wealth building wealth management all of those things that it's critical to know because you know we need to be good stewards of the money that we make in our business as well so absolutely so uh neos kind of has two parts to it we have the practical implementation, how do we trade the stock market? Um, and so what we teach is techniques and methods on how to get bigger financial returns in your investments. Um, and so we show different strategies, different concepts that the average person can use in hopes of getting those bigger returns. Um, and so we, we've got I think four courses currently we're, we're coming out with the fifth and sixth this year uh, that people can engage. And they're very thorough. Like our very first intro course is over 20 hours of content. Um, so that's, I mean, it's a very thorough course and we do that on purpose so that when you hear it, there's going to be so much to it. You have to listen to it over and over again and people sure. learn best by repetition. Absolutely. Um, and so we teach how to engage the market with confidence and, you know, right now, while we're doing this interview, the market's crashing. And so how do I manage my finances in a, a dropping market? And so we, we even teach you that kind of stuff. Um, and we not only teach you how to manage your finances, Mark, Mark especially teaches you how to manage your emotions in the midst of your financial movements. Beautiful. To, I love that. To me, that's where a lot of our company is spirit centered. Um, you know, you, we don't let our soul man speak, which is another way to frame it. Like if we're putting it in church mm -hmm. language, right? Our soul doesn't speak. We put our soul in, into subjection. So we, we subject our emotions where we're not making those emotional business decisions as it comes to the market, because the market's literally created to take advantage of your emotions. Everything's dropping. I should sell immediately. Well, is that the best is that really the best idea? I'm not saying you should or shouldn't. I'm saying, is that the best idea? 
these I've had so many people being like, stock prices are so low. I need to buy everything right now. Right. Maybe, maybe not. Right. Are you doing it because you think it's at the best price? What if it keeps going down? Are you willing to hold through that? And so a lot of it is the emotional elements and we give you keys on how to control that. But to be clear, we do not, we do not give financial advice. We do not tell you what you should or should or shouldn't do. We simply empower you to have the knowledge and the understanding to make your own decisions. Mm -hmm. And we help give guidelines and Mark helps to, you know, when you're bowling the first time they put up the bumper rails, he'll help kind of establish some bumper rails for you until you are confident enough to go and take it on into your own hands. Um, but I do, I do want to be clear about that. We are simply an empowerment business, not an advisory business. <laughs> yes. Yes. Very so we, good clarification, Kate. <laughs> you know, and when we, we actually show people stocks that they could consider buying and selling, and we, we show, you know, here's your buy point, here's your sell point. This is what you could consider doing. So we literally walk you through this process, mm -hmm. but you'll never hear us say, you need to buy this. Right. So what we do is we present these options to people saying, hey, this stock looks pretty good. This is what we normally look for. This stock is normally what we look for. Um, and then we walk you through the entire process, win, lose, draw. Yeah. And, and we keep track of it. And so that's, that's our biggest leg is our education piece. And then Kate actually this year has started another side to it called Beyond Financials. And I'll let her speak to that just a little bit. Okay. Um, yes, Beyond Financials. It is a branch off of NEOS, but it's completely free. It is really the spiritual side. Um, and when I say spiritual, I mean more ethereal side to administration of financial structures in the earth. And that's a lot of fancy words. What does that mean? Um, essentially, the Lord has downloaded to me and started to teach me how the economic structures of heaven are founded and what they look like. And he has, he has shown me, not all of it by any means, but we all prophesy in part. He's shown me my part of what, of, he, I'm sorry, I'm talking to the Lord at the same time while I'm talking to you. Um, he has not shown good. me several economic gateways. Um, and I teach those gateways. And then we learn how to take what we see and administrate that into the earth, more specifically into our own trading. Now, it's not an ascension group. I don't do ascension groups. All I do is give teaching and education to empower others to seek the face of the Lord and get their own revelation. I'm a huge proponent in get your own revelation. Don't try to enter in on mine or someone else's because the part you are supposed to see is for you specifically you are so so powerful and you carry a key that i will never carry mm -hmm. and so it's it's our opportunity and responsibility to bring this level of revelation so others can go in and ask the lord and partner with him and come alongside him um in the release of some of these more heavenly economic things Mm -hmm. And so, um, like I said, it was just launched this year. It's totally free. It's on our website. And there are, I think, five teachings posted right now. I do a once a month webinar. It's a once a month webinar. And um, right now I've been teaching mostly on something called the trading eye. And it okay. is a convergent gate in the heavenly realm where a lot of economic structures converge and, and happen. And it's, it's a really powerful, amazing, humbling thing to access. Wow. That's yeah. Nice. And I, you taught a little bit about it at uh, Moravian Falls and it was absolutely fascinating. And um, yeah. Okay. I'm excited. And you're going to be teaching some of that in the academy, right? A little bit. Okay. Yes, I'll touch on it. Okay. All right. Very good. All right. So um, either one of you, what is a gold nugget that our audience could take away with and perhaps put into action? So you I, anything? I would, I would say, you know, from a financial standpoint, from what we're discussing, um, when you're making your business decisions, you don't, you don't make them out of a place of fear. 
Mm-hmm. And so you don't make, I don't make trades from a place of fear. I'm not afraid to lose money. I'm not afraid of what if this trade doesn't work. Um, I'm making it out of a place of faith, out of a place of trust, not a place of confidence saying, you know, I'm confident in what I've seen. I'm confident in what I've heard and I'm willing to take this risk because risk is a part of everything. And I think a lot of folks don't understand that, right? Like opening your own business is risky according to the world. Mm -hmm. But the vast majority of millionaires are business owners, yeah. Not employees. Um, right. And so you, you have to be able to take that risk, but we don't take risk from the place of what if I fail? We take it from the place of what if I succeed? What happens when I succeed? Right. And so yeah. you know, even in trading, this is something that we really try to instill in our students is when we take this trade, we take it with confidence that what we've seen is going to continue to play out. And if it, if it does, awesome, we make money. If it doesn't, great, give me the next trade. Let's go to the next one. Yeah. And it's the same way in business, right? I think nine out of 10 businesses statistically fail. Um, I would have to rival that depending on whether or not it was birthed from heaven. But having said that, I, I heard a story with uh, Robert Kiyosaki one time and he had a friend who opened a business and he asked him about his business and he's like, oh man, it, it's completely collapsed. And he was, he was smiling about it. And Robert said, well, why are you so happy about it? He goes, eight more. One of them's going to work. Uh, because uh, he knew statistically all he needs is that one. Yeah. All he needs is that one. And so <laughs> operating from faith, not fear, I think is a big deal. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Well, technically, you know, my business has failed a thousand times. There you go. You know, do you have the persistence and do you trust that? No, God said I was going to do this. Right. You know, God said this was going to work. Am I going to stay the course and, and, you know, la, 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 la to all of the negative (laughs) that goes around me and it doesn't look like what the world would think and, you know, just... God makes a way and provides and, and, you know, somehow I'm still standing. There you go. And you have matured with every single failure. A lot of times it's not that we're failing. It is a time of rest and maturity. And you may be carrying the vision of the Lord and you implement what he tells you. And it seems like it's failing, but it's not. He's maturing you so that when your business is a success, you are as well, that you are able to hold the, within the strength of your being, the success of your business. Because if you have weak character and weak integrity and weak maturity, it doesn't matter how successful your business is, it's going to crumble because you are not strong enough to hold it up and to bolster it and be the pillar that is founded beneath it. And so with every Failure is an opportunity to add one more brick to your foundation for the time that it is a success. Yeah. If I, if I remember that. right, I was going to try to look it up real quick, but I, Walt ahead, Disney, I think Walt Disney actually went bankrupt. Seven. Was it seven? Seven times. I thought it was a, a three lot, or four. A lot. He, went, he went bankrupt a times. lot yeah. before he really became Walt Disney the Walt Disney that we remember, the giant who built a, a theme park in the middle of a swamp. Yeah. Right? I mean, he, went, he actually went bankrupt multiple, multiple times and he carried this vision knowing this was what he was supposed to do. And eventually it took and he has one of the largest enterprises as his legacy out there. I mean, how many companies does Disney really own? Right? And so... All of that comes from his willingness not to give up. And a lot of times we have to work out the vision. A lot of times not as God, God is not going to download and release the fullness and entirety of a vision to you um, because you, A, may, may not be mature enough to handle it all, or B, he wants you to enjoy the process of working it out. As a mother of three children, my favorite part of pregnancy, all that is actual delivery. 
It's my favorite part. I know that sounds crazy, but just right. the, <laughs> but the <laughs> next, the experience, <laughs> the experience of birthing life. I love it. Is it hard as heck? Oh my gosh. There's nothing harder, but after I'm on the other side of it, I look back, you can ask Mark with every child. I look back and say, look what I did. There is nothing that I can encounter in my life and say, I can't do it because yeah. I just birthed a human being. Right. You know, so the sense of accomplishment and strength that we carry when we're birthing a vision for something has the same effects, the same mm. edification and encouragement for our, our very being. Beautifully said. There was a, a Navy SEAL. He's written a book. I can't think of the guy's name. He wrote a book. Um, but he said, we're taught that when we think we can't go another step, we've actually only gone 40% of what we can do. Oh, yes, yes, yes. They made a movie. Uh, yes, I remember that quote. Yes. And, and that's it's so true. Yep. And, and if you've ever run uh, races, I used to do triathlon. And, and it's the same thing. That's it. <laughs> you know, swimming was always my best. And I always thought, well, I need to put that at the end because running is my worst. And they have that at the end. <laughs> <Amen>. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah, very good. Well, wow, you guys. Thank you so, so much. This has been just tremendous. I'm sure that our audience just absolutely um, got so much out of this and they, they will definitely want to get a hold of you. So is it, what is the website again? www.neos, N-E-O-S-C-D-G for Neos Capital Development Group, neoscdg.com neoscdg.com and just to let everyone know i have taken so many notes all of the show notes all of these amazing quotables that they gave us all of the links everything will be on the show notes on spiritcenterbusiness.com and anywhere else that you find this and just so you guys know mark and katie if you want to share with your peeps we are also syndicated uh, across the Fringe Radio Network. So we are on iHeartRadio and iTunes and Spotify and CastBox and Deezer and a whole bunch of others. Wow. You can find all of those media outlets on spiritcenterbusiness.com. Just scroll to the bottom and it'll tell you, show you all of them so you can download whichever is your favorite app. You can get this and download the MP3 so that you can listen to it over and over and over again you because go, you're awesome. right. Repetition is the key that's so it. perfect thank you so much we so you appreciate. are so that's welcome and oh thank you thank you very much are there any final thoughts or words that you'd like to say on the on the public part before we go over into the academy and teach some really juicy stuff over there <laughs> just that you each of you are so incredibly powerful beyond your wildest imagination so Take who you think you are and multiply it exponentially, and it doesn't even touch who you really are. So whether you are pursuing your own business or are interested in finances, whatever that needs to look like for you, you are more than powerful enough to achieve it and see success. Whatever mentalities are in your past, leave them in your past and allow yourself to walk through the gate that the Lord is opening up for you right now. I feel like some people needed to hear that. Wow. That was so good. Yeah. I'm going to have to go back and like transcribe that word for word. That was <laughs> brilliant. You know, you should take the stage more often, Katie. Say it, right? <laughs> you're a great speaker. I love your style and you're so articulate. I love it. Thank you. Oh my gosh. Everything I'm yelling at kids all day. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. Oh my gosh. And Mark, thank you so much for all of your um, diligence to hold that vision so that, you know, in times like this, you can share it with people. I love that. Thank you. All right, you guys, until the next time, stay spirit centered. Bye-bye. 
spirit-centered business, spiritual principles, and business principles combined. If you're ready to align your destiny and discover the destiny of your business, join us. We are entrepreneurs, leaders, and business professionals who take the power of the spirit realm in our business seriously. We go beyond just consuming information. We participate, activate, and engage the supernatural with unbelievable results. If you want to gather with like-minded business professionals to activate spiritual principles and mastermind creative solutions to business challenges, Spirit Centered Business is your tribe. Go to spiritcenteredbusiness.com to become a member today. Thank you for listening to Spirit Centered Business with Berlin Newby. Be sure to like, subscribe, and share with your friends. The next age of doing business by being spirit-centered is coming together in collaboration, working with spiritual principles and knowing our destiny. Join our tribe at spiritcenteredbusiness.com and we'll catch you on the next broadcast. Peace out.